Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a notes app using vanilla JavaScript and local storage. Okay, so right here we have the application itself. So first, I want to show you what it can do. So right here I've got these two notes. If I make a change to this, for example, and I say actually I'm going to watch some decode, right? If I then save this, we can see that it's going to save it to the left side right up here alongside a last updated timestamp. So I can then make a similar change to the one right down here and I can say, hey mate, for example, go back and we can see that the most recently updated note is going to appear on the top. Now, of course, we can also add a new note by pressing this big button top left corner. It's going to make a new note and I can delete by double clicking and then pressing OK and it's all gone. So um, before we get into the code itself, I just want to say uh, it's going to be linked down below so you can download it and follow along if you want to. And also, um, you know, guys, uh, this is just one way of creating a notes app in JavaScript. There are many different ways to achieve this, but I tried to put emphasis on separating the code for the user interface and the business logic. So there's actually going to be about three layers of code here, and it's going to be super interesting to see how it all ties together. I'm going to be showing you some techniques in JavaScript to achieve this and create something like this, and hopefully you can learn something for your future projects, all right? So with that being said, let's go inside this tab right here and begin from scratch to create what we just saw. Now guys, also remember that the source code for this is gonna be linked down below if you want to download and follow it along. So going inside here, I wanna firstly show you the HTML before moving on to the JavaScript, all right? Now, I've also got a CSS style sheet which is currently unlinked, so, the reason for this is because I already pre-created all of the CSS for today's video. The reason why I've done this is because um, I thought there is not much point in wasting your time going through CSS when the main part of today's video is going to be the JavaScript. Okay, so you can download this right here and copy and paste it in your own project, um, you know, to get your CSS working and your user interface looking nice. Okay, so um, with that being said, let's go inside the index HTML and begin work on the actual HTML structure for the notes application. Now, at the end of the day, um, the JavaScript is going to be the one that is going to render out the HTML. But I'm going to write it here first to actually show you what the structure is going to look like um, before handing that over to the JavaScript. All right, so inside here, Let's make a new div with a class of notes and an ID of app, okay? So now inside here, this will be the main container for the application. It's going to have two parts, the sidebar on the left side and the right side is going to be, of course, the preview slash editing section. Inside here, we can say a new div with a class of notes underscore underscore sidebar and a second one for, of course, the right side, the preview section, okay? Inside the sidebar, we can make a new button, okay, with a type of button and a class of notes underscore underscore add. That is going to be our, our, our add note button. Inside here, we can just say add note. Underneath the add note button, we can make a new container called notes underscore underscore uh, list, okay. This will be all of our existing notes, okay. So for an individual existing note, we can say div with a class of notes underscore underscore list dash item. So this right here is going to represent an existing note. It's going to have three elements. Um, we're going to have the note title, the body, then the last updated timestamp. So going back inside here, let's create those three elements. We can say note underscore underscore small dash title. And we can say here something like lecture notes. And do the same thing for the body and we can say um, you know I learnt nothing today and for the updated we can call this one small updated and we can just say uh, Thursday 3 30 p.m. saving this going back in the browser we get something like this so now let's finish off the HTML by moving to the preview section so for the preview section we can make a new input field right here with a type of text and a class of notes underscore underscore title. This will be for the notes title. 
let's add a placeholder here of enter a title okay and we can make a second element here a text area with a class of notes underscore underscore body this one here of course being the notes body we can just say something like I am the notes body saving this and going back in the browser we get something like this right here so this is going to be our HTML structure which like I said earlier is going to be eventually rendered by the JavaScript UI code instead okay but for now we can see what it looks like and what we are going to do with it okay now I'm now going to be commenting in this CSS file so we can see what it looks like save this go back in the browser and we have of course our nice user interface looking pretty good okay um, so there is one thing to cover before moving on to the JavaScript that is going to be the active note so we can see here of course the active note looks different it's bold it's got a background so to achieve that I'm using a class in the CSS which is called notes list item dash dash selected so I'm going to copy this modifier class right here go back inside my HTML I'm going to add this to my list item class and save this and go back here and we can see we have that you know different styling for the active note or the selected note so let's now move on to the JavaScript so when it comes to the JavaScript like I said earlier we're going to be using local storage to store our notes so with that being said let's go back inside the index HTML let's create a new directory called JS right here inside the JS directory let's make a new file called main.js this main file is going to be basically just starting up the application so we're going to see what this looks like very shortly um, we're going to also create a new file here called notes api.js this one here is going to be the first main file we're going to be working on um, it's going to be responsible for interacting with the local storage um, to of course retrieve save and delete our notes now in the index HTML let's go below the body here and say script for source at dot forward slash JS and then of course main dot JS this will be a type of module that way we can make use of the native JavaScript import export syntax so speaking of that let's import the API file inside the main.js we can say import okay notes API from dot forward slash notes API dot JS so what are we going to import here well going inside this file we can say export default class then call this notes API so now basically this notes API refers to um, the class here which is going to contain a bunch of methods to access our notes the first one here is going to be called static get all notes okay so um, all these methods are going to be static by default or they're going to be static that way we can call them whenever we want uh, the next one here is going to be called uh, it's going to be called save note it's going to take through here the note to save the last one here is going to be called delete note this will take in the ID of the notes to delete so we have our three basic operations here to get save and delete our notes keep in mind that the save note is gonna not only update but also insert a new note okay now let's write the code for this get all notes method but first I want to show you the local storage side so going back inside the browser we can see in the application tab of my dev tools I've got an existing local storage key value pair for what I did on this example so your one here is going to be an empty box so there might be nothing here or at the very least there's not going to be this key right here this key value pair so we can see here the current structure of my notes from this example we have two notes in this array with a body an ID a title and a last updated uh, timestamp okay so this timestamp here is using the ISO format okay now let's retrieve all of these notes using JavaScript right now inside our get all notes method so down here we can say const notes is equal to JSON dot parse gonna pass through here local storage dot uh, get item then say notes app dash notes 
then we're going to say or a new empty array. So basically, um, if there are no existing notes in the system, it's going to say or and give us an empty array. So in this case here for you, this is going to run and you're going to get that empty array. So now if I say return and I pass through notes, um, I can then console.log the result of that method. So I can say console.log pass through here notes API dot get all notes. Then I save this and go back in the browser. We can see that in the console, I get my two notes right here. For you, it's going to be an empty array. Okay. Now, these notes here, like we said earlier, um, they're going to be ordered by the most recently updated timestamp. So let's go back in the code and add a sort uh, algorithm to these notes to ensure that they do get sorted by their most recently updated time. So I can say here notes.sort take through A and B and we can just say right here return and we can say new date A dot updated is greater than new date then B dot updated then I can say negative one otherwise one so this is just my sort algorithm um, I've got a whole video sorry I've got a whole video dedicated to the uh, to the sort method if you want to check that one out but basically this right here is just going to sort our notes by the updated timestamp so if I save this we can see that um, we guarantee that the notes are going to be in order of the most recently updated or it's going to be on top okay now we have done or we have finished off our get all notes method. The next one here is going to be the save note method. So for this one, um, let's begin by uh, allowing it to insert a new note. So going inside the main.js, let's say right up here notes API dot save note, then pass through here a new note object. This here is just going to say something like title and I can say new note then the body is going to be I am a new note. Notice that we have no ID or updated timestamp because of course it is a new note. So the ID and timestamp are going to be added through the API layer. So with that being said, inside this method, let's begin by firstly getting a reference to all of the existing notes. We can say const notes is equal to notes API dot get all notes. Then we're going to simply say right here notes.push we're going to be adding the note to save to our list of notes okay then we can say local story .set item. we're going to basically just re-save the notes app dash notes uh, json sorry local storage key and we can say json.stringify and just basically override our existing entry and we can say notes inside here so now Let's add the ID and updated timestamp to our note. So we can say right down here, uh, note to save dot ID. Let's generate a random ID. We can say math dot floor. We can say math dot random times one million to give us that random ID. Ideally, on the server side, you would do this right here or just increment it. But in our case, with local storage, it's going to work perfectly fine. We can also say note to save dot updated is going to be equal to a new date object of the current time dot to ISO string to give us that ISO timestamp. So now it's going to save this data. If I save this and go uh, back in the browser with this code running, we can see that in the console we have four notes. Now, why did we get two more? Um, I must have accidentally saved midway through there. So this is kind of bad data, so um, I might just uh, remove this from the JSON data. So go inside here and just um, remove this value by copying this and we can go inside the text editor real quick. Uh, we can convert this to JSON, format this and we can just remove this line and we can copy this or cut it and paste it back inside the value to give us our clean data. Um, hopefully, let's try again. There we go. Uh, I think that worked. Maybe. There we go. So it's working fine now. So we have our three notes saved. Um, the new notes right down here. Now, what about updating an existing note? So also keep in mind that we have the new ID and the updated timestamp for that one. So that worked. Now, 
when it comes to updating a note, um, we're gonna pass through the ID. So let's update the notes which we just added in. Let's copy this value, go back inside our VS Code, let's paste the ID inside this save note method. Um, then we can say, for example, title, let's make this something like uh, the title has changed. I'm not gonna save this just yet. I wanna go inside this file and just add a check. So inside this save note, we need to basically grab onto the existing object for that note, which we want to update. So right here, we can say const existing is equal to notes.find, then pass through here notes, then we can say notes.id is equal to notes to save.id. So basically, whatever ID you pass through here, it's gonna compare it against each existing note. If it finds a note with that ID, then it's gonna put it inside this existing uh, constant or object. So, I'm gonna say here, if there is an existing note with the same ID that you pass through, it's gonna be an edit or an update, okay? Otherwise, it's gonna be an insert. So now, we can just copy uh, this code and put it inside the else for our insert. For the update though, or the edit, it's gonna be this, it's gonna be existing.title. We're gonna replace this object's title with the one you pass in, note to save.title. Same goes for the body. So we can say body right here. And for the updated timestamp, we can just simply make a change and make that the current time. So now it's gonna resave the notes with the updated title body updated uh, timestamp and it's gonna all work perfectly fine. So now, if I, um, if I let's, let's just, let's save this one, then I can save this one. So um, we get four because of the initial save. So we get um, a new copy of that note, but we can see the one that we actually updated here, this newly updated note um, from earlier now says the title has changed. So our update method works. If I go back inside here and make this something like, you know, water bottle and save it again, we can see that we keep four and we have now, you know, updated the body for this one here. So we have those two methods done. Let's work on the delete. So for the delete note, um, it's gonna work in a similar way to the update or the save. So it's gonna firstly get the existing notes. Then it's gonna say const new notes is equal to uh, notes.filter. We're gonna filter by the ID. We're gonna say note, then say notes.id does not equal ID. So basically with this filter method, we're just saying, let's get every single note that does not have the ID which you pass in. So basically, it's gonna be the current notes uh, length minus one. So if you've got eight notes, it's now gonna be seven notes because the note ID you pass in is gonna match at least one of them. So um, it's gonna be everything but the ID you pass in. Then we can say right down here, once again, local storage dot set item, then pass through the new notes inside our JSON stringify. Let's save this go inside our main.js, we're gonna delete this note right here. So let's copy this ID, so copy this one here, then say notesapi.delete note, pass through here the ID. If I save this and go back in the browser, we get the three notes, um, the existing mistake copied one, okay, and our, and our two existing ones. So um, it's been deleted and I can also copy this one here and delete this one. So I can say back inside here, paste that in and then delete that and we're good to go and we are back where we started. So that is the API layer done for our notes API. The next step is gonna be the UI layer or the view, okay? So for the view, let's make a new file here called notesview.js. So for the notes view, um, it's gonna be a very similar thing to our API. So it's gonna say here, uh, export default class of notes view, okay? So, what's gonna happen here is we're gonna have a constructor. So we're gonna say constructor, and this constructor for the view, it's gonna take through a root element. So, we can say root right here. Basically, this root refers to this class or this div right here with the class of notes and the ID of app. So, basically, 
um, when we initialize the application, we're going to pass through this div and it's going to then be passed through to our notes view. That way, our view code where the HTML gets rendered knows where to put the data. Okay, the next parameter here in the constructor is going to be an object. So this object is going to by default be an empty object if you don't pass anything into it. So that is what this equals empty object is doing. It's just providing a default. This object, um, we're going to be using object destructuring here. We're going to say on note select, then say on note add, okay, then say on note edit, then on note delete. So let me explain this right now. So basically, inside our constructor, we can directly grab the value of these keys in the object we pass in. So it might be easier to actually go inside the main.js and actually import our view. Okay, so let's go inside here, import notes, uh, notes view from notes view.js. Okay, now inside here, we're going to then just say const app is equal to document dot get element by id pass through here the app to get our root app object then we can say const view is equal to a new notes view okay pass in the application element then as an object here we can pass through our different um, properties for our you know these listed here so for example on note select this right here is going to be a function so to summarize this this notes view, when the user, for example, clicks on a note in the sidebar, this view is going to then call the function that is passed into the constructor here. So for example, if I say on note select, I can say in the console, um, note has been selected, something like that, right? So now, if I provide this to my notes view, I expect that when the view gets a click from the user, it's going to send out a signal or it's going to call this function, right? Um, and we should see this console log in the console. So going back inside here, we're doing a similar thing for the on note add, edit and delete. If this doesn't make sense right now, don't worry, it should make sense very soon. But we can say this dot root is equal to root just to save this data. Do the same thing for the select uh, right here, the add, the edit, and the on delete. So they're all going to work in the same way, just keeping a reference to them so we can call them later on. Then we can say this.root.innerHTML. So this is where we're going to be uh, using JavaScript to render out the view. So here, we need to just render out the initial HTML for our application. So going back in the HTML document, let's just copy and paste all of this stuff inside here and also comment this out. Okay, uh, actually let's comment everything but the main root because we need this one. So this is required, but inside here we can just get rid of those, comment them out. Um, so now going back inside the JavaScript file, Inside here, let's set the HTML inside our root to then be all of this stuff right here, um, aside from the existing note, because this needs to come from the JavaScript local storage instead of you know this dummy data. So let's get rid of this. And in a similar fashion, let's just uh, remove this notes body to then say something like, um, you know, I think I did Let's go back here. What do I do for this? I just did uh, take note. So let's make this take note, just like this. And the top one was, what was that? That was new note. So let's make this new note. So it's not necessary to do this if you don't want to, but just so we can see what, what's going on, we can just do this. Um, and we can just make this a bit, you know, more to the, uh, to the right side. I might just actually go back inside here and just delete this uh, new one so we're good to go again. Um, so basically guys, look, we've got this inner HTML set against the root element. So we can see here actually that 
since the main.js is running, the view is created, we can see that we have our content inside here already. So the JavaScript has rendered out the HTML. Okay, now the next step for the view here is going to be to add event listeners for our various different actions. So um, let's add a click listener for the button to add a new note. We can say const btn add note is equal to this dot root dot query selector pass through here uh, notes underscore underscore add. Okay, so we're simply just selecting the add note button. Let's do the same thing here for the input field for the title. So notes underscore underscore title was the name of that. We can see that right down here. Okay, then we can say notes underscore underscore body this time for the INP or input for the body. Then we can say right down here, btn add note dot add event listener. I'm going to listen for the click event. So now when the uh, when the button for the add note gets clicked on, we need to then call our function right up here to communicate this event to our main.js. So right here we can just say this dot on note add and just call that function. So now if I save this, then go back inside here, let's specify the on note add here, then just say, um, let's add a new note. Okay. So now this function is going to be run when I click on the button to add a new note. Let's save this and go back in the browser, check the console, and I click on this and we get here, let's add a new note. That's working perfectly fine and we can sort of see how um, this is basically how the view is going to interact with the, um, you know, uh, the main controller. So we're going to, we're going to get to that shortly, um, but this is just our, um, our main controller or oh, sorry, um, sorry, let me just rephrase this. <laughs> um, this is just our way of communicating back to the lot, to the uh, business logic. Okay. So. Um, hopefully it's going to make sense very shortly guys if it doesn't already, um, but just bear with me. Um, that is that. The next step now is going to be to add the same listeners um, this time for the input field and the text area. Okay, so basically whenever the user exits out of the input field or the text area, we need to then fire off a on notes edits event. So let's go down here and we can grab both the INP title and the INP body. Then we can say dot for each right down here. We can say input field. So grab each input field right here. And we can just say input field dot add event listener. Listen for the blur event. Okay, so basically that just means whenever the user exits out of the input fields, we can say const updated title is equal to INP title dot value dot trim. So basically just grabbing onto the new title, then trim off the edges. The same thing for the body, updated body. We can say INP body dot value dot trim. Then we're going to fire off the this dot on note edit, then pass through here the updated title and the updated body. So now we're actually, as opposed to the previous one with the on note add, we are now passing through uh, arguments to the on note edit uh, function, which means if I go back inside here and I specify the on note edits to hook into it, right? I can now grab the title or should I say the new title and the new body. So now if I go inside here, I'm going to console.log the new title and the new body. Save this, go back in the browser. I'm then going to make a change here. I can say, for example, uh, you know, measuring tape, exit out of this. We've got measuring tape and the take note. Go inside here, make this microphone. Just random things in my room, obviously. Um, we get measuring tape and then we get microphone. So that is our event back up for the edit note. All right, so I hope that makes more sense now, um, but there you go. So um, the next step now is going to be uh, adding a method here to create a new um, item in the sidebar. Okay, so for this, 
Let's go back inside here. I'm going to minimize this constructor, but I just want to add a new to do. So I'm going to say to do here. I'm going to say um, hide the note preview by default. So we're going to get back to this line uh, later on, but for now, let's remind ourselves by adding that right there. I'm going to minimize this and get back to um, adding an item to the sidebar. So when it comes to the sidebar, Let's make a new method called create list item HTML. I'm using underscore here to denote it is going to be a private method or it should be used as a private method. This here is going to take through an ID, a title, a body, and an updated timestamp. So um, essentially, guys, this is going to create the HTML string for one of our sidebar items. Make a new constant called max body length is equal to 60. So basically, it's going to be 60 here. This is going to this is going to be um, the maximum length uh, before we get the ellipsis three dots to shorten our body length. Okay. Inside here, we can just say return. We can return some HTML. Now, also keep in mind that for both this right here and what I showed up here, I'm using the back ticks to give us multi-line strings and of course the ability to string template and pass through variables, which we're going to see right now. So let's return the HTML. It can be div with a class of notes underscore underscore list item with a data dash note dash ID of then pass through the ID. So let me explain this. Um, I'm going to pass through here using dollar sign and curly braces the ID which was passed in. So basically, um, we're just keeping track of the note ID for this notes list item in the sidebar using the HTML5 note, sorry, HTML5 data set um, attribute. Okay. Down here, we can make a new div called, uh, you know, notes underscore underscore small dash title. In here, we can just say, uh, using once again, template strings, going to pass through here um, the title which was passed in up here and do the same thing for the body. And uh, when it comes to the body, we need to basically just adhere to this max body length. So we're going to say body dot substring and we're going to say right inside here zero and then max body length. So basically it's going to select uh, whatever body you pass in, which might be very long. So you might get passed in something like this huge string, right? So, um, when you get past in that, we're going to only select between zero, so the first character, then up to the 60th character. Okay, then if I just, uh, if I put this a bit down so we can see what's actually going on, okay, after we get the first 60 characters, we're now, uh, we're now going to say uh, if the body dot length is more than the max body length, Okay, so if it's more than 60, then we're going to add the ellipsis. Otherwise, don't add the ellipsis. Okay, so um, that's that. So we're going to add those three dots if the length is more than 60. Um, cool. So the next one here is going to be the updated timestamp. Now, we're going to be using the browser's built-in, um, you know, uh, formatting method. So we can go down here. We can just say uh, basically just... Uh, the provided updated, uh, you know, date object right here. And we can say dot two locale string. Going to pass through undefined here. That way we can have access to the second uh, argument. Going to pass through here, date style as full, then time style as short. So basically, um, if you haven't seen this before, uh, two locale string just simply uh, formats the date time in your own, you know, local timestamp or sorry, local date formatting, um, you know, uh, format. Okay. Um, we're saying the date style is going to be full and the time style is going to be the shortened version, which gives us, you know, what I showed you in the example right here with the date and then time. So let's stop here and take a break and just take a look at what this is going to give us. So in the constructor, um, actually, yeah, sorry, in the constructor, um, just to demonstrate this method, let's say console.log, okay, I'm going to pass through here, uh, this.createListItemHTML, 
I'm going to say an ID of 300, a title of hey, a body of yeah, mate, and an updated time of now. Okay, so let's see what this produces us. Let's save this and go back in the browser. We can see that we get this HTML right here. Yeah, mate, um, we get no ellipsis. It's, you know, only like eight characters long or nine characters long. Got the title, the note ID right up here, and the updated timestamp of the current time in my local uh, format. So that is our create list HTML method. Okay. Um, the important stuff is now upcoming, okay? And that is gonna be updating the list of existing notes. So, we need to have a method right down here, which is going to update the list of notes in the sidebar. This will be called update notes list. It's gonna take through the notes. Let's just rename this to be what it should be. Update notes list. This one here is gonna firstly grab onto our um, our list of notes container so um, this div right here so let's copy this class go down here and we're gonna say const notes list container equal to this dot root dot query selector pass through here the notes list okay the first step is gonna be to empty out the list of notes we can say empty list pass through here note list container dot inner html equal to empty string to clear the html let's save this and um, we might just actually let's not save it or let's let's just continue okay let's just continue guys um, i might just uh, do the next step and then show you an example so um, down here the next step is going to be to insert our um, html for each note so down here we're going to say for of so um, for every single note of our notes which get passed in up here we're going to say const html equal to this dot create list item html using that method we're going to pass through notes dot id notes dot title notes dot body then notes dot updated now because this right here is going to be an iso timestamp we need to say new date, then pass in the timestamp right here. Um, sorry for the very long code line here. I might just zoom out if I can. So I'm going to pass through all of these values from the note object of the array. So this notes here is basically just going to be um, what's in the local storage. So all of this stuff right here. So I'm going to pass through this array into this method it's going to create the HTML for each note then it's going to say uh, note list container uh, dot insert adjacent HTML and this will just insert the HTML before the end of our container so one after another basically I'm going to say HTML so now upon saving this and going back in the main.js let's call that method on the view we're going to say view dot uh, update notes list let's insert those notes the notes are going to come from our api so we're going to say notes api if i can access it right here dot get all notes let's just actually import this class again so let's import notes api from the notes api dot js save this right here and we should see our updated notes list and we get them right here so those are my existing notes uh, for you they might be empty unless you inserted the notes earlier when we worked on the um, api okay so we've got this part done um, in terms of the html but the next step now is going to be to add your event listeners for when the user you know clicks on a note we need the notification back in the console like we showed earlier and when double clicking on the notes we need to add that event listener to of course delete the note so let's go back inside here we're going to go under this for loop and we're going to say right here add the select dash delete events for each uh you know list item each note i'm going to say here notes list container dot query selector all 
gonna pass through here the notes underscore underscore list dash item. So basically just selecting each, you know, uh, HTML notes here, I'm gonna say dot for each one of these, I'm gonna grab the notes list item, and we're gonna say right inside here, our notes list item dot add event listener. When it gets clicked on, we're gonna fire off the on um, on note select function. Okay, so we can say new function here. Just simply say this dot on note select. Okay, then pass through the ID. That way, the other code knows what ID the user has selected. So we can say notes list item dot data set dot note ID. So basically this note ID comes from the HTML up here where it says note dash ID. This note dash ID gets converted to camel case to give us this, you know, property. Okay. So now um, let's save this, go back in the main.js. Let's add that on note select you know, function and say here, grab the ID and say note selected, then just add the ID. So plus ID, save this, go back in the console, click on the note and we get note selected 7038. That is the ID of the note. Down here, it's also gonna work in the exact same way. There we go. So let's now add the code for the on note delete. All right, so down here, we can say notes list item dot add event listener for the double click event. So when it gets double clicked on, we're going to run a function and this function here is going to first do our confirm dialog window. So we're going to say const do delete. If so, we're going to say confirm, say, are you sure you want to delete this note? Okay, so if they are sure, so basically if do delete gives us true. So if the user says okay to this uh, confirm dialog menu, this will be true, otherwise false. So if it's true, then I'm gonna say this dot on note delete, uh, then pass through here. Um, once again, the notes list item dot data set dot notes ID. So now let's save this, go back in the main.js. Let's just uh, add the function for the on note delete. With the ID, we can say notes deleted and pass through the ID to the console. Let's save this, go back in the browser, double click, press OK, and we get notes deleted right there. So that is um, the majority of the view. So we can see how we can communicate with the other parts of the code which use the view um, to pass that data in and out using these event style functions. Okay? So I hope that sorry, I hope that made a lot of sense. Um, I've been recording for quite a while now, guys, so my voice is a little bit uh, raspy, so I apologize. But let's just move on um, to the next method, which is going to be the update active note. So as we saw earlier, this note here is active. So we need to update the view, okay, to of course present this note here, right? When I click on it into this section here, as well as add our highlight CSS class to make it look visibly selected. So back inside here, add a method called update active notes. Okay. This here is just going to say note. It's going to take through a new or take through a note. Okay. This will then say this.roots.query selector. We're going to grab the notes underscore underscore title input field. We can say dot value is equal to note dot title. Just simply updating our input field. Same goes for the body. We can just say, uh, you know, notes dot body. Very straightforward. So now go back inside the main dot JS. Let's say view dot update active note, then pass through here. Um, if I just grab a reference to the note, so notes API uh, dot get all notes, then I can just get a reference to the second or the first note. So I'll just pass through notes here, then say set the active note to be the first one. So notes at index zero. 
saving this and going back in the browser, we can see that we have the content for the uh, zero note inside here. All right? Now, keep in mind that ideally, when I select a note, so when this function comes back and I click on a note, I then want this function to call this stuff here by the ID, but we're going to see how this works shortly. For now, we're just testing out this method, so um, we don't need to do that inside here, but we're going to do it very shortly. Anyway, this update active note not only needs to set these title and body, but also it needs to, um, it needs to, you know, update this section here to be visibly selected. So for that, let's go back inside here and we're going to say this dot root dot query selector all. Let's get each one of our notes underscore underscore list item. So basically each list item, I'm going to say dot for each one of those note list item. Once again, I'm going to say, um, let's go down here. I'm going to say note list item dot class list dot remove. So we're going to remove the class of notes underscore underscore list dash item dash dash selected. So if any of the existing notes were selected and have our special background color and bold class, then it's going to be removed. Then we can simply just say this dot root dot query selector this time passing through um, the ID or sorry, the class of notes underscore underscore list dash item pass through here the data dash note dash ID equal to the one we pass in note dot ID. So now we are specifically choosing using the attribute selector here in the square brackets. We're choosing the list item in the sidebar with the note ID of what we pass in as our active note. That way we can just say dot class list dot add and add our modifier class to give us that background and the bold text. Let's save this and go back in the browser. We can see we have the boldness on that first note right there. Okay, so we are almost done with the view code. The next step is just going to be to essentially have the ability to hide this section um, once the page first loads up. So if you have, sorry, if you have no notes currently in your list, then we don't want a note to appear here, or at least the input field and the, and the text area. So let's go inside here, add a method for update note preview visibility. Okay. Take through the visible flag. So true or false. We can just say this dot root dot query selector. Once again, just choosing the notes underscore underscore preview. We're going to set the visibility of the right side. So style dot visibility equal to if you passed invisible, then going to make it visible right here. Otherwise, we're going to make it hidden. Okay, so look, guys, basically, if I go back inside the constructor here, by default, okay, we're going to hide the notes preview. So we're going to say this dot update note uh, visibility, going to pass through here false. So now if I save this, we can see that by default, um, the right side is hidden. And the other code, which we're going to write right now, the other code is going to um, make this right side visible. Okay. As long as we actually have some notes to preview. So it's not working right now, but it's going to work very shortly. So that being said, let's move on to the final piece of the puzzle. That is going to be a new class inside the JavaScript. So let's go inside here, inside our JS folder, make a new file called app.js. So basically this one right here is going to tie everything together. It's basically going to be similar to this one, but in a bit more detail and a bit more structured. So with that being said, let's go inside here. We're going to export a default class of app. Okay. So um, this one is going to take through a constructor just like our last one. Also taking through the root like we did for the notes view. Okay. This main app is going to hold the list of active notes or the list of notes. So we're going to say this dot notes is equal to a new empty array. 
Then we're going to say this dot active note is equal to null. Okay, so this will store reference to the currently active notes. Then we can say this dot view is equal to a new notes view. All right. Okay, so um, you know this is now going to um, include our notes view. Since this file here is going to be our main one where everything gets tied together, it's going to include our class, right? So it's going to make a new instance of our notes view taking through the root, just like this. And we're going to pass through our different, you know, callbacks here. But for now, let's make this empty just so we can actually make some progress. Um, we're going to leave it like this just for now. Okay. Then go back in the main.js and just remove all of this stuff to clean it up, okay? And we're only going to import right up here. Actually, let's remove all of this stuff aside from our app line and instead import here um, the app from dot forward slash app.js. So now we've got this constant called app, okay? Really, this should be called root, okay? This one though, I'm going to say const app is equal to a new app class. Okay, passing through the root right here. And this is basically all we need for our main.js. It is simply just initializing our app, which then ties everything together. Okay, so let's now save this, go back in the browser. As we can see, we get nothing. Okay, so no loads, sorry, no notes loaded up. And of course, this is by default gonna be invisible on the right side, um, which is why we need this, you know, call. If I didn't do this, you know, visibility on back inside here, it shows this. So that's not good. So let's go back inside here and put this back and continue on with our app.js. So for this one, right, um, we're going to be uh, making a new function or a new method here called handlers. So this handlers one is going to be once again, uh, private or used as privately. Um, we're going to return here the object. Now, this object is going to be all of our on note select edits add and delete, which means we're going to call that method inside here. We're going to say this dot handlers call this to give us this returned object. Here, we can say on note select. Okay, grab the notes ID like we did earlier, and we can just say, you know, uh, let's just do console log for now, uh, note selected. Uh, like previously, plus note ID. Do the same thing for the rest of them. So do that. It is on note add. Okay. Um, the on note add, of course, has no um, arguments. So we can just say console log uh, note add. Okay. The on note edits is going to have the um, it's going to have the title and the body passed in from the UI. We can just say title and then body. And lastly, we have the on note delete like we did earlier, the note ID note deleted. So we have all of our handlers specified right here being passed through. So if I save this and go back in the browser, click add note, we get in the console, the note add. There we go. Okay. Let's move on now to the next part of the constructor. This will be to basically just update the list of notes when they first start up the application. So we're going to say this dot refresh notes. So this method right here, we can now define, we can say underscore refresh notes. So this one here is going to make a new constant called notes equal to notes API dot get all notes. Okay, so we're going to be calling the notes API. So let's import that right now. So notes API, just like this, we're going to get all of the notes from the API. Okay. Then we're going to say right here, uh, this dot set notes. Okay. It's going to take through our notes. So for this set notes method, let's go down here and just define this just so we can see what's going on. Keep it blank for now, but basically this will then call the UI to update you know, what's visible there and show our notes. But if we have at least one note in the UI, sorry, one note saved, okay? So if notes.length is more than zero, then we're gonna set the active notes. 
So we're going to say this dot set active note pass through here notes at index zero. So basically the first note, the most recently updated note is going to be in the first position right here or active. So this dot set active note is going to be defined right down here. And this one now is, is basically just going to set this variable. So let's get this one done. We're going to say this dot um, active note is equal to the one you pass in. So let's take in a variable right here or uh, argument. I'm going to say active note equal to the, the notes you pass in. Okay. Um, then we can say this dot view dot update active notes. Okay. So um, calling the view now and telling the view to update the active visible note. Going to pass through, uh, you know, uh, the note here again. So we're going to obviously call this method down here to, of course, do all these things and make it visibly selected. Okay. Now I've sort of, you know, jumped the gun here with this set active note. So let's just take a minute here and take a look at this set notes now. So what this set notes is going to do is it's going to uh, keep a reference to the current list of notes. So we can just say right down here, this dot notes is equal to, and then take in the notes, which is passed in through here. Then we can say uh, this dot view dot set notes list. So once so update note list. Sorry guys, it's going to take through the notes which are currently selected or which are currently you know in the application. It's going to update those on the view and of course populate them like we did right up here and do the exact same thing this time saying update note. Oops, sorry guys update note preview visibility. If we have at least one note, then we want this view to be, we, we want the right side to be visible. So we can just say right here, notes.length is more than zero. It's going to give us true. So it's going to make our editing or preview area visible. So um, I might just stop here just so we can see what's actually going on. I'm going to save this and go back in the browser. As we can see, um, we get obviously an error. So let's figure out why um, app.js line 24. So, okay. So let's take in our notes inside the argument or parameter list right there. So now save this, go back in the browser. We can see that a lot has happened. Um, we've got our notes in the sidebar here. It has then populated, um, or it, it has then told the UI. Okay. It's told the UI, which is the active notes. It is then highlighted it and then showed it in the right side here for editing purposes. Now, the very last step is just going to be to uh, add the logic for these handlers. So we're almost done. Um, if I go back inside here, if I click on this note, we get this callback. If I double click, press OK, we get this callback. If I edit, OK, we get the editing contents, you know, the new data for it. So we need to now just implement these handlers and get the actual save actions done. So basically we need to then call the API inside here and, you know, do the things that we need to do. So for the on note select, when you, when you select a new note, okay, we need to grab which note to, you know, actually set as the active note. So we can say const selected note is equal to this.notes.find then say note, note.id equal to the note ID passing. So basically just find the note in our list, which has the same ID as we pass in from the user interface. Once we've got that, we can just say this.set active notes and call that active note method to simply pass in the selected note. So now if I save this, go back in the browser, I'll click on this one. It is going to be the active note. It's going to call that method and handle all of that business for us. Very simple. Okay. The next one is called the on note at. So for this one, once again, very straightforward, right? Um, let's make the new note. We can say const new note equal to, and this will be where the default title and body is going to be. So I can say title here, make the default title new note. Okay. Make the body. Uh, take note, for example. So that's our default title and body when a new note is created. 
then we can just say down here notes api dot save note pass through here the new notes okay then just say this dot refresh notes and simply just refresh our notes list which should now include our new note save this go back in the browser press add note and we get this right here okay so that's working perfectly fine all right once again very simple once we've got these you know handlers hooked up the next step is going to be the on note edit so for this one we can just say right here notes api dot save note so with this save note this time we're going to pass through remember this needs the id so this method here needs the id of what you want to save in order to actually save it so this is going to come from the active note because remember we only get the title and the body from the ui the ui doesn't really know what notes is currently selected it can figure it out by looking at the class here but um, technically all it knows is what the new title and body is so inside here we're just going to say id equal to this dot active note dot id so basically just using the data from our you know uh, active note variable or instance property here it's grabbing the active note id then we can just say title make that the new title that we're going to pass in and the same goes for the body alternatively you can shorten this by just saying title and then body that's also going to work um, so now we can just say after this this dot refresh notes once again to refresh that list of notes let's save this go back in the browser we're going to fire off the edits event by just saying something like hey how's it going get out of this that's going to trigger the edits event and we get the saved notes right there with the new updated timestamp there we go the very last piece of the puzzle here is going to be the on notes delete so for this one very straightforward once again we can just say notes api dot delete note pass through the note id to delete okay then we can just say once again this dot refresh notes and then we are done let's save this go back in the browser double click this and press ok and the note is gone so that is the notes application using vanilla javascript and local storage um, once again guys i apologize my voice has been a bit bad recently um, this video took me about two three four hours to create so actually record so i um, hope that made sense um, i'm willing to answer like usual comments below if you have any um, the code for this is going to be linked below in the description if you want to download it um, and yeah so there we go guys um, if this video helped you out drop a like and subscribe to decode for more videos like this one um, thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one